Hey everyone, so this week you're going to start working on a multi-image composite. You're going to be planning this composite, taking images for this composite, and then putting them all together. Now, like the Levitation Project, this is going to be, uh, you do get extra time for this because you're going to have to do some shooting. Uh, now, a quick note for my photo, for my students who may have been in my photo 12, um, you may remember all of this information or you may not. Uh, this is the same lecture that I'm giving that I did in photo 12. Now, what's the big difference? I'm expecting a lot more, okay? Uh, compositing is a skill that needs to be developed that takes a lot of practice. So this time around for the advanced class, I'm going to be grading a whole lot harder. So if you remember all the steps, if you just took my photo 12, um, you could probably skip this lecture. But uh, like I said, I'm going to be grading harder, so you might want to watch it again anyways. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first step we're going to do is actually planning your composite. I know it could be fun to just go out there and start shooting random things, but for a composite to really work out well, a plan um, is almost always essential. Sometimes we get lucky with our photos and finding the photos with the same lighting and angle of view and such, um, but I can guarantee that your Photoshop work is going to be a lot easier and faster if you actually plan this out. Okay, so first we need to go ahead and focus on step one. So I'm sorry, I, I skipped forward a little bit. For the assignment, you're going to be creating one, a sketch. Uh, two, you're going to be shooting and sourcing photos. And then you're going to be combining them in Photoshop. So this lecture is all about step one, creating the sketch. So first of all, we need to make a sketch of what the final composite will look like. So this is going to help us figure out what type of photos we need to take. Um, there might be some instances where you need to source photos, which means you need to get photos from another source. So for my example, I'm going to be using planets. I don't have a telescope or a camera that's good enough to capture these beautiful planets so I am sourcing some images from NASA and I'm gonna go over this some more um, in the next lecture but remember that you can't just pull stuff off of Google nilly willy and just you know be fine with it because it might not be legal um, there is there are steps to take to find images that you can use legally Anyways, this lecture is not about that. This lecture is actually about planning the composite. Okay, so something to keep in mind is that you must use at least um, a background, a subject, whether it's a person, animal, object, plant, and then at least one extra element, another person, another animal, another object, another plant. I'm giving you guys a lot of creative freedom with this. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do, but you need to, like I said, have at least a background and then two other um, items or elements that you're compositing in. Okay, so at least one of these images needs to be one uh, needs to be an image that you've taken yourself at least. Um, now, for the other parts, can be stock images, but only if it's legal, and um, only if it's something that you can't shoot. Like I said, a planet. Um, if you're trying to get stock photos of something you can shoot, that's a no go. Okay, uh, go take the photo yourself. All right, so before we start sketching. Uh, we need to come up with an idea. So uh, your idea needs to be something that would be impossible to do in real life, okay? Um, I don't want to see composites of, um, you know, a cat sitting in your front yard. Like you can take a photo of a cat in your front yard. This has to be something that's going to be uh, maybe extreme. Um, like I said, something that you can't just photograph in real life. So. Uh, I've got some suggestions here to get you started. And with all of these different examples, I've also included links to the specific artists' uh, websites or videos that they're talking about their project. So if something really is catching your eye, uh, click on the link, check it out, look at more of their work, listen to what they have to say, and you might get inspired by them. So here we go. Um, uh, Andre Sherbach creates these <laughs> wonderful giant cats so like i said just a, a a regular old cat sitting you know uh in your front yard no a giant cat sitting in your front yard 
Yes, that could work. Um, but so Andre has done these just incredible uh, composites of kitties. So check that out if you're a cat lover, if you're thinking of going and doing something similar. You can make something large look tiny. So in this example, you know, by Rafi A, uh, we have this great mushroom illuminating this little tiny person here. So that's another thing that you can do. Uh, not the, not, I'm not saying this exact example, but like I said, making something large look tiny, that's something that would be impossible to shoot, right? Okay, creating unexpected combinations that express a characteristic. So, uh, let's see. All right, so in this example by Steve Kaplan, the swimmer is hungry like a shark. Oh, that's my uh, automatic <laughs> uh, color checker coming on. My color calibration is set to come on, well, I think it's like once every two weeks. So that happens sometimes. Anyways, okay. So uh, unexpected combinations. Um, the swimmer is hungry like a shark uh, to be successful. So they've combined a shark with a person next to a pool. And of course this works better than let's say a bear because a shark is actually related to water and this is a swimmer. So, you know, things to think about. So with this image, you know, they added the shark to the person, um, they put the shark and the person next to this pool, and then they added this shadow back here um, to give it that more realistic type of look. You can do something like express an emotion. How are you feeling? How could you say what you are feeling visually? So in this example by Brooke Shaden, um, you know, she talks about carrying her own light in dark times. And, um, you know, she does all this stuff really quickly and easily from home. If you're interested in seeing what she's about and her process, there is a link to uh, a talk where she talks about this. Okay, you can think, what if? So in this example by Eric Johansson, he thought, what if the island was actually on the back of a fish? Okay, so now what do I do to actually go about creating this image? Um, so yeah, coming up with the idea will help you figure out where to go from there. Or you could be random. <laughs> I am a huge fan of surrealism and art. And so surrealism is the idea that you're expressing something that's in your subconscious, in your dream world, in that world where uh, your brain is working, but you, you're not really you know, conscious of what's going on. It's your subconscious. So um, you can pull something together that's kind of weird to just get it all going. And I mean, this is kind of random, but is it really random? I mean, we have the earth swirling around. There's a big storm going on, which, you know, for all of this, this all really evokes a lot about climate change for me. So, you know, the storms are getting more and more violent as climate change is getting worse. Um, we have a mirror showing us the ocean and the mirror is cracked. So, you know, we are breaking what our environment. Um, we have this beautiful rose and then a snake coming from it. For me, this evokes the idea of the Garden of Eden and the serpent um, that tempted us or tempted, you know, uh, Eve. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. Uh, and that's just my reading of it. Maybe the artist meant to do this. Maybe they were just pulling stuff out and it did have to do with that. I don't know, but surrealism is definitely an option as well. And something else you can do is get inspired by past artists. Um, there are a whole lot of museums out there now that are letting artists use their um, you know, images of famous artworks for free. Now that doesn't mean you can just start printing them and selling them. You have to, um, if you remember from our ethics talk, you have to use them with, it, with the idea of fair use. You have to change them up somehow to express something. So these are all great examples of, uh, ways that famous artworks have been used. Um, and so, yeah, if you want, you can go back to my ethics lecture where I do list a bunch of websites where you are allowed to use their images for free. Um, and there are a bunch of museums on there. 
Okay, so once you get your idea, you need to write a sentence that expresses this idea. And this should include the subject, the location, the action, and the mood. Why am I asking for all this? Because this is gonna help you and it's gonna help guide your creative decision making. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna be wandering around trying to figure out what am I trying to shoot. So, for example, my composite is a happy giant stuffed animal sitting on a rooftop looking at planets okay so breaking this down we have a happy which is mood giant stuffed animal subject sitting on a rooftop location and looking at planets so now we can take this sentence and it's going to help us better make a sketch of what we need so next we're going to make this simple sketch let me move this over here showing what we're going to do so here's my happy stuffed animal my mood and my subject um, looking at some planets so that's going to be over here and my location is city rooftops um, and so yeah now i have an idea of what i need to photograph all right so the next step of this is going to be how to go about photographing this which is going to be the next lecture <laughs>